Hi, I'm Rhett Jesse, and today we're going to talk about the Metrics Digital Proximity System. Specifically, we're going to talk about spike suppression. Specifically, we're going to do this with the MX2034 four pin proximity transmitter system. Well, what I mean by four pin is it has two pins that has the four to 20 going to it, and then it has two other pins that go to common and signal on a monitoring system. So the four to 20 can go to a PLC, a control system, or a SCADA system, and then you can have the raw signal going to a piece of monitoring equipment. You also have the BNC available to connect test equipment. To start, we're going to show you a video of spike suppression. And while you look at this, you'll see what spike suppression is and what we're trying to eliminate. And then we'll talk about that more when we come back. Metrix is the leading supplier of industrial vibration monitoring systems. In this animation, we describe how Metrix spike suppression works. Spike suppression is used to inhibit high amplitude electrical noise from impacting the vibration transmitter system. Noise like keying handheld radios, or foreign metallic material coming temporarily between probe tip and target area, or power supply transients, or other electrical transients. This feature temporarily suppresses the 4 to 20 milliamp output during high amplitude, short duration, single polarity vibration spikes to prevent spurious alarms and false shutdown signals. Vibration amplitudes greater than the spike suppression setting that last longer than the spike duration setting will be reported normally via the 4 to 20 milliamp output. The spike suppression feature can be accessible through the advanced settings in the Metrix DPS configuration and utility software. Please refer to the user manual for more information. Now you know what spike suppression is, what we're going to do is we're going to see how the MX2034 behaves in some actual situations. Well, to do that, let me describe our setup. What we have is an MX2034, and we're taking advantage of the four pins. The four to 20 pins have been looped through this digital voltmeter, and what we've got is set on milliamps, and we're reading now about 11.7 .7 milliamps. Okay, and that's because we have a vibration signal coming from our hardy shaker, the HI913. All right, then we have the other, we have the raw signal from the other two pins, which is simulating a monitoring system, going into this voltmeter, and now it's reading volts. So now we've got it set to where we can read voltage. So that's our setup. We also have a one meter probe connected to the, uh, well, connected to the digital proximity system, but we also have it watching a target on the HI913. And presently we have the vibration level set at five mils peak to peak at 50 hertz. So that's what we've got. Five mils peak to peak at 50 hertz. This particular transmitter, I've set it up to be zero to 10 mils peak to peak. So half scale would be 12 milliamps. And that's why we're reading 12.78. Now, it's not exactly 12 because there's an allowance of plus or minus 5% and it's well within that. Let's look at how the DPS is configured. If we look at the software, we can see that we have a vibration four pin transmitter. We've got 4140, a five meter probe, a one meter cable and zero to 10 mils peak to peak, as I've described. So that's our setup. So let's go ahead and cause a few problems with the system, okay? The first problem that I'd like to show is with a radio. Now, our system is actually pretty stable for our radio frequency interference. So when I key the radio several times and I'll key it over the digital proximity system and I'll key it close to the probe itself, you'll see that it's very immune to the radio frequency interference. So I'll go ahead and key it, see if I can get a reaction. You know, maybe just a little bit, you see that? And I'm keying it back and forth. It's actually the keying energy that causes a problem. I'll put it, you know, not much happening when I key it. I can do this over near the probe as well. Not much happens. And that's all good. And so you don't want uh, a radio to cause a problem with your MX2034 digital proximity system. You just don't want that problem. So with a radio, it's kind of tough to create this spike that we're looking for. You know, another time you get spikes is when you connect test equipment 
to the BNC when you're connected to a monitor and you're connected to the control system. Now, like people come in and take periodic data and you don't want that to cause a problem. So I'm gonna do a, that a couple ways. I'm gonna first do it with a, just a multimeter. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and turn on this fluke that I've got. And we'll set this down so you can read it's uh, yeah, zero volts. And then I'll connect it and I want you to look at the gap voltage and the milliamps to see if it changes much when I connect because we don't want to see a large spike because that could potentially shut you down. We don't want that while you're taking data. I mean, you're just taking data for Pete's sake. So let's just take some data. Okay, not much happens really. And we can see the voltage is the same at 10.0 volts, 10.0 volts. So the voltage is pretty same, you know, changing in that last decimal place there just a little bit. And then you've got uh, 11.84, 11.8 uh, milliamps, and that's just about where we should be for a five uh, mil peak to peak signal. So now I'm gonna disconnect it. We'll see, it changes a little bit. Okay. But still back to 11.8, 11.73, what we had before. I'll go ahead and connect it again. Back to 11.8. Changes a little bit right as I connect it, but not significantly. And that's not gonna affect your control system or what you're doing. Uh, at the plant and allows you to take the data. So that, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and use another piece of test equipment. This next piece of test equipment I'm gonna use is a Quattro Pro. Now this Quattro Pro is energized, okay? And it's connected to my computer. All right, this is simulating uh, maybe another field device you might have that you wanna check to see how it's working. So, we have the Quattro Pro connected to my computer. It's powered up, I'm in channel one. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the BNC and we're gonna do, again, we're gonna look at the milliamps and the voltage to see if that causes a problem. Okay, I'm connected. Uh, the milliamps changed a little bit. Gap really didn't change. And that's what you want. You really want to be isolated from any test equipment that you join. And that's, that's really the power of this MX2034. So none of that's caused a spike yet. So really you're thinking, well, Rhett, get on with the demo. All right, I will. All right, to do that, I'm really gonna cause a spike. What I have here is a thin piece of metal and it's gonna become, it's gonna go between the probe tip and the target material. So when I swipe it across it, what will happen is you'll see the voltage will change on the voltmeter, but we wanna see how much the milliamps change. Now, the way that spike suppression works is if I create a spike in less than a quarter or 25 milliseconds, so that's 0 0.025 seconds, it shouldn't register on the four to 20. So if you have a very quick transient, like let's say if you have a power supply transient, like due to switch gear, or, or some other transient of the plant that you haven't been able to identify, uh, what our system will do is it will average that out. It knows it's not real. If we're sampling at 18,000 times a second. And so when we look at 25 milliseconds, that's, that's like an eternity. So what we do is we look at it and we say, hey, is that a real signal or not? If it's not real, we just reject it. Now, in the raw signal, you'll see that. So in the gap voltage, you'll see it respond immediately, just like you would expect in a raw signal. So that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the gap voltage change immediately, but you'll see the four to 20, if I do it quickly enough, it won't change at all. If I go slow, and I'll tell you when I'm going slow, you'll see that that four to 20 changes uh, pretty rapidly. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to follow. So I'm gonna try to do it, uh, I'll, I'm gonna go, I'll go fast and let's see if we can make it work. Okay, you saw that the, it changed a little bit and the gap voltage changed just a little bit. I'll do that again. All right, now I'm pretty quick. You know, my reflex is quarter of a second going by there. That's pretty fast, 25 milliseconds. Not a quarter of a second, 25 milliseconds, 0 0.025. But if I go slow, watch what happens. Okay, you see drastic changes with both, all right? So this responds very well to, if anything really would abnormally happen to your machine, like a vibration event or something, a thrust change, or what, it doesn't matter what really, what happens to the machine. If it's real, we, it just goes to the four to 20 like normal. 
But if it's false, let's say just it is just something that goes by the probe tip uh, very quickly or it's a, a spike in the electrical system that you see very uh, a, a rapid spike less than 25 milliseconds it just doesn't affect the 4 to 20. Now if you're a customer that says well I don't know if I like that you can go to the software and under advanced settings you can go ahead and just remove spike suppression. You remove it it tells you what spike suppression does and then you can send the settings. Settings have been saved. All right, now spike suppression's off. All right, so we can go back to home. All right, we've taken off spike suppression. Now let's go ahead and cause a spike again and see the effects. Well, you can see the milliamps went way up and that's something we don't want. Spike suppression helps you help run your plant. It helps prevent those false signals from getting inside your control system that can cause problems. You don't want your PLC to shut you down or your SCADA system. We want you to have accurate data. Since we're sampling at such a high rate, we can look at the signal and we can tell if it's a bad signal or not. So if it's less than 25 milliseconds, it doesn't impact the signal. And that's the key to spike suppression. Thank you very much.